Hello, my name is Paul James and for more than 30 years I have been performing a comedy character called the Dowager Lady Crabtree or Constance Lady Crabtree. Now many people have got in touch with me and asked me how I became a female impersonator. Well, I can honestly say that it's not something that I grew up thinking that I would be doing. Uh, but I did like drag acts and female impersonation of a certain type. Now, in the 60s, there were a lot of what I would call tacky drag acts, where people dressed up in costume, often looking fabulous, often not looking so fabulous, and they would perform in pubs and clubs and they would mime to records and stand and mime to Shirley Bassey or whatever. And really I could not see a lot of skill in that and that kind of act really didn't appeal to me at all. But in the 60s and 70s in England we had a superb drag act. The I was going to say the master of the craft, and perhaps I should say the mistress, but the man who was the master was Danny LaRue. And Danny had fabulous shows on television and on stage, and they were really the thing to, to watch and to follow. Although I loved watching Danny LaRue, and he was very impressive and looked stunning, I was very good at comedy. The sort of female impersonation that I really enjoyed were comedians in England like Stanley Baxter or Dick Emery when they did comedy female characters and probably played the, the battle axes and, and not the glamorous females and that was what really appealed to me. And I suppose everything changed for me in around about 1976 when I came across for the first time a superb female impersonation act called Hinge and Bracket. And that really changed everything. Hinge and Bracket were two very talented performers called George Logan and Patrick Fife. And they didn't play the glamour drag. Uh, they were dressed as two spinster ladies. But what they did was lifted drag to a, to a totally new art. George has said, you could not call Hinch and Brackett a drag act. They really were female impersonation. And the thing that really appealed to me was they were talented vocally from a comedic point of view and as singers and this lifted female impersonation to a new art because they created such convincing characters and so convincing that throughout their long career uh, until Patrick died in 2002 many people believe that they actually were women and that was the thing that really appealed to me taking it from an actor's perspective and creating a character that people could really believe in and that was the one thing that really appealed to me. The turning point in my career came in July 1978. I was working for a short time in a big hotel as entertainment secretary and this part of this involved putting on cabaret on a Friday night and I was continually looking for new things that I could perform to entertain the audiences. And I came across uh, a monologue that I thought would work very well as a woman. Bearing hinge and bracket in mind, I thought I could do it in a sort of hinge and bracket type character. And that was the night that Lady Crabtree was born. Now I had some costumes with me and when I'd been at university during one play uh, when we'd finished it I gathered up some props and costumes and things that hadn't been needed, 
one of these things was a wig. This is the very wig. This is how Lady Crabtree came to be this colour, simply because this wig was left behind. And so wearing some borrowed clothes and jewellery and that wig, I performed this sketch as Lady Crabtree. I called her Constance because I'd had a very, very elegant teacher, tutor, when I'd been at university called Constance Elliot. It was such a dignified person and I adored her. And I, so I called my character Constance after Constance Elliot. And I'd also appeared on stage recently at the Civic Theatre in Chelmsford in a production of Alan Bennett's comedy, 40 Years On, and my character had been called Crabtree. And so really it was thanks to this tutor, Constance Elliot, and Alan Bennett that Constance Crabtree got her name. And so I called her Lady Crabtree, performed this sketch, and I thought that would be it. Well, she proved to be very popular with audiences and suddenly I was invited to appear as her again. Invitations came in for me to judge a, a beauty contest, to present prizes. Soon I was uh, getting an invitation to appear on the radio as her. And before long I was doing television, uh, two books, and this whole character developed really from that one single performance and over 30 years have gone by and I'm still performing her to this very day. Extraordinary how life works that. I suppose one of the greatest pleasures for me in performing Lady Crabtree over all these years is that when I go and perform a show or speak at a dinner or go and present prizes at the golf club or, or something like that, because being an aristocrat, this character, and she has a handle to her name, Lady Crabtree, I get an awful lot of invitations to go and open things or present prizes or, or appear at functions, which is lovely. But the greatest satisfaction comes in that when you're appearing for an audience, they tend to fall into two camps. There are half who either know from the start that Lady Crabtree isn't real, or halfway through the performance you see through the dialogue, they tend to cotton on that hang on a minute just realize what's going on here this is really a man but you tend to get 50% of the audience who or for who seeing is believing and they think Lady Crabtree is real and if I meet them afterwards in still in character and they ask me various questions about her her life and so on and, and I can tell that they think still think that she's real and that gives me a very great satisfaction that to have created a character that people do actually believe in her and so so that's great fun and I, I love trying to make her as realistic as possible and so I hope that I've got away from that very tacky drag act end of the market I've never made her glamorous uh, she, she's been a bit of a battle axe and that that's partly the fun playing the, the character as well. Uh, also I think when you're playing that sort of character, uh, as with Barry Humphreys and Dame Edna Riveridge, you can get away with saying things to, to audiences and to people that you could never say to them in real life and that, that's rather fun as well. So I'm thrilled that Lady Crabtree is still in demand and I hope that you will enjoy watching some videos of her on YouTube. Thank you.